Now, let's start with the bowl. How do you make a bowl? Well, it, this is one of the easiest parts of the whole process. Any old stick will work. I just use a piece of a cedar limb. A lot of people that make bows for starting fires, they like to have that bow about as long as your arm. It doesn't have to be that long exactly, but that's what I've used here. Well, where do you find a string in nature? Hopefully, you've got something with you, whether it be boot laces or a strip of your shirt or pants you can use to make a string. Uh, there you have that. Now, for your bow, all you need to do is cut a little bit of a notch on either end of it. Here's, here's the top end here. Something for that string to catch. Like so. And tie it up. And that's all you need to do as far as preparing the bow. Spindle can be made out of any stick you find in nature. I like using ash trees because ash trees tend to grow fairly straight, the limbs. You can see here's a nice stick from an ash tree that'll make a good spindle. I've already taken an ash stick, which is fairly straight, made a spindle here. I made a couple three different ones here. Uh, now the size of the spindle can, can vary a little bit. You can, gen as a general rule of thumb, have it about the size of your thumb or uh, an index finger. Uh, the length can be, oh, eight to ten inches, maybe a foot long or so. But one important thing is you want to have it fairly straight because if your spindle is too crooked, as it spins around, it's going to be too wobbly. And so the more wobbly that spindle is as it's spinning around, the less good contact you're making with your baseboard, the less good friction you're creating. So that's why you want to start with a fairly straight spindle. Now, obviously, you don't want your spindle to go burning through your hand, and so you need something to hold onto uh, that you can put the spindle into. And as you can see, what I'm using here is just a chunk of oak. It's a harder wood than the ash spindle I'm using right here, and so the ash is not going to drill through the oak. If you want the ultimate, you take a rock, Ideally, you find a rock that already has a little dimple into it, and you can, you can chip away and, and make a nice little hole here. But the rock will never wear out. And you'll notice something I've done here. I've added a little bit of grease. In this case here, I'm using, using some beeswax. That will reduce the friction, because you want all the friction to be on the board that you're starting to fire, not so much having friction up in your hand here. That's how that works like that. It's the same for that right there. You're not necessarily going to find a nice board that's been cut by nature, so you can use anything you find. Here's a piece of uh, uh, cedar, I believe. Here's another piece of sycamore, a little stick. Uh, the thickness of the, the baseboard or the hearth, some people call it, uh, can vary. You don't want to have it too thick. If you have it really, 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 really thick, um, the little bits of charcoal that are going to fall through here are going to cool down by the time they finally fall to the bottom. So something about that thick would be appropriate. Here's just a stick I've used to make a fire with before. That's about the right thickness there. Here's an old piece of cedar, as you can see. They all have about the same thickness in common. If you make it too thin, uh, you're going to drill your way through your, your heart through your baseboard too too quickly. If you have it too thick again, well, all those little particles of charcoal that fall out are going to cool off and not be burning anymore by the time they finally hit the bottom. So roughly about that thickness there, as you can see, is the preferred thickness for your baseboard or your hearth. Now, to keep the spindle in one place and the board to keep it from slipping around, you'll first want to use your knife tip to gouge a pilot hole. Notice these notches. We'll get to that in a minute, but first we need to create a pilot hole and then the notch. Already I'm getting smoke. I think we're home free, but we're not home free yet because fire needs more than heat, which I'm creating here with friction. It needs more than the fuel, which I've got with the wood here. It needs air to get inside there. So let's take a close look at what's going on here. You can see in some of these old holes I've made and made other fires with, I've got a little notch cut in here. And this notch lets air get into this hot spot here and turns all these little particles into actually burning particles. 
Right now, if I can, do, if I just have the spindle spinning in here, all I'm going to do is create charcoal. Until I get some air in there, I'm not going to actually get this on fire. So what I'll need to do now is cut a notch to let the air get in here. Let's do that. This notch you're cutting, you want it to be wide enough to allow plenty of air to get inside there, but you don't want it to be so wide that the spindle is going to fall out. Now what if you don't have a knife? Well, Sharp rocks have been used for many, many, many years for lots of things. And a sharp rock, this is a piece of flint, a piece of chert, it'd be slower than our wonderful modern knives, but you could cut your notch with a sharp rock. So that's worst case scenario. If you don't have a, a knife with you, find a stone, break it into a piece, and you've got a sharp edge on it. It would be slower, I'll admit that, but you could eventually get that notch cut without a knife. Let's go ahead and start to make a fire with friction. And you can use a lot of different things to catch this uh, little pile of coals you're going to get here. You can use uh, uh, a leaf if you want to. I've just got an old piece of metal that was sitting around. Let's get started. You'll want to wrap the uh, spindle around the string once of your bowl like that. The tension doesn't have to be exact. This, is, this can be adjusted. Let me show you exactly how you can adjust the tension. If it's too loose, I don't know if you can see this or not, but just, just grab a little bit like that to increase the tension. If it's simply too tight, you want to loosen this up a little bit here. But the tension on your bow is adjustable by holding your hand like that. You want to put this in here, like so. It takes an octopus to... Uh, do all of these things at once. Brace it with your foot, your baseboard. And if you don't have a nice rock that has a, a, a little hole in it, like I've been using here, again, a, a chunk of hardwood like this, you can gouge out a little hole there. Put a little wax in here. If you got something like that, or some grease, uh, hair grease, whatever you, you've got, will help reduce the friction. That's what I've done in this, this stone here. Now that we have a notch cut in, air should be able to get in there and you're going to see smoke and hopefully we're going to get a little pile of smoldering coals that will transfer to my pile of tinder. Bring this up here. Now I'm going to transfer this smoldering pile, a little ember here, to my tinder. I know it seems odd to make fire in your hand.
but uh, you know when it's time to set it down, and that time is now.